First of all, I would like to thank to Professor Carlo for inviting me to, to this conference, which is, I think is, is, is a pleasure because it's, it's the first in, uh, time that I give a talk outside of Spain since the pandemic. And, then, and, and as, as Professor Carlo and Professor Harrison said yesterday, I think it's important because it's not the same. I mean, for me at least, it's not the same to talk in front of you than looking at the, at the screen. Okay, I apologize because I'm very clumsy with the pointers and things like that. Then I probably will make a lot of mistakes. But uh, the first thing that I would like to say, to say is that, okay, well, as, as Professor Carlos said, my name is Fernando Rey, and I'm going to tell you about the studies of charge compensation. Okay, well, this is a, a, a well, Professor Carlos is aware about the way in which we, we work in the, in the Institute. And even I'm just, the presenter of, uh, I'm, I'm the one is the speaker in this session, but I am just presenting the result of a, of a really large team that is involved and involving many people in the lab. We work in the, in the ITQ, we work as a team, we work all together uh, targeting one particular, uh, particular project. In this case, we were interested in, in, in the study the charge compensation effect of insulite of the, of the cation. First, I will, this is the line of my presentation. I will start with a brief introduction. Then I, will, I choose two, two examples for, for showing the, the charge compensation effect. And the first one is the fluoride mobility in pure silica root 13. And also, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, 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 the metal containing ITQ66, which is a new cellite, it's still not, not published. And also, finally, I will, I will talk a little bit about proton, proton rotation in zeolites. And of course, it will be some general conclusion. I would like to start just showing the, the, what is the definition of a zeolite. A zeolite is, a, is the metallic atom of zeolite, typically are silicon and aluminum, are tetraedrally coordinated and, uh, by four oxygen. And this is a, and these tetraeds are linked by sar, by sarin vertex, and then forming fully ordered framework that contain channels and cavities of molecular dimension. Here, what is important is the aluminium that provides catalytic activity to the to the to the to the zeolite, and also the presence of these channels and cavities of molecular dimension that provide selectivity in catalytic for catalytic application. Then we can prepare many, many zeolites. There are more than 255, some of, but not, we cannot prepare all of them with the, with the chemical composition and the cavity that we would like to, to, to take it, to, to make it. I would like to start saying, for, for instance, we can prepare zeolite as pure silica. In that case, the, the zeolite will be highly thermally stable, will not contain any acidity, will be highly aerophobic, and then uh, we, we have a very low uh, uh, interaction between the adsorbent and the adsorbate. Then they are useful for separation processes. But the main application came when we prepare the zeolite in presence of, 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 of cations. These cations are typically compensated with aluminum or any trivalent, or any trivalent uh, element included in the, in the, in the framework. When this is done, the charge is compensated, the, cation, the, 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 the incorporation of aluminum generates a negative charge in the framework that is compensated by the cations. And these cations in the zeolite are able to be transferred to the reactants, giving rise to the, to the formation of intermediate that give up the proton to the zeolite and they evolve to the products. And then this is a real catalyst, heterogeneous catalyst widely used in, in, in industries. How we make the, the zeolite is very simple. We have a, a mixture of silica and the metal source, the trivalent source. We put in contact in aqueous media with the structure directing agent. The, the uh, structure directing agent could be in nature, in sodium, potassium, calcium, and others. But uh, in, in very, very often in our lab, we use organic structure directing agent. Then, we need a mobilizer, and the mobilizer has the role to dissolve the silica and, tra and transfer on top of the structure directing agent, wrapping 
the, the organic cation giving rise to the final zeolite. Then the, the other parameters are, you know, is, is the, the presence of other inorganic cations, like sodium and potassium, that makes a lot of effects in, in the synthesis, and also time and temperature. Okay, and by controlling all these all these parameters, we can we can make zeolites. In principle, organic structure directing agent is, is perhaps the most important <coughs> effect in the synthesis of, of, of zeolite. And what is said, it has to be stable in the synthesis media. Uh, you have to think that this is high temperature in a, in a alkaline condition. Has to be soluble in water. That means that the, that the carbon to nitrogen ratio, which gives the, 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 an idea of the, of the solubility, it has to be, uh, has to be between, has, this ratio has to be between 11 and 50. But also, I found uh, uh, many uh, synthesis in which the, this carbon to nitrogen goes down to four or, or goes, goes up to until uh, 18. Has to be rigid because then you get better selectivity, bulky because you want uh, high absorption capacity and, and you want uh, reactants to go in and out uh, easily. And, do, and typically, do you want elongated because you don't want uh, large cavities with narrow, uh, with narrow modes, uh, mo uh, with narrow pods <clears throat> that makes the diffusion difficult. This is not always the case, but absorption could be available. The effect of the organic structure direct, directing agent is stabilizing the, the, the inorganic framework uh, through a van der Waals interaction. There are a lot of, there are thousands of, thousand of, 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 of very weak interaction that makes a, a stable the composite, the organic, inorganic composite that is the true cellulite when you prepare the cellulite. Also, this organic compound is filling the, the cellulite voids. This is, this is, uh, you know, the, 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 the empty volume of the final cellulite is very large, but when you prepare the cellulite, it's completely, uh, the, the empty volume is completely occupied by the cation. Then the, the OSD, the, the organic structure directing agent dictates the shape and the volume of the cellulite uh, of, the, of the cellulite channels and cavities. Then you have a spherical uh, cation you will end up with with cellulite having large scale, large cavities that could be clutter seals with no uh, accessibility at all, or a small pore cellulite. If you have linear or cylindrical shape in the in the organic structure directing area, probably you will end up with unidirectional channel cellulite. And if you have branched uh, uh, cations, you will end up with two-directional uh, channel system in your in the final cellulite. Also. And this is important, and it's going to, to be uh, discussed a little bit. The organic structure agent could, could direct uh, the, the location in the framework or the active site, thanks to the chance compensation effect. This has been, uh, this can be understood because if you have the organic cation with the nitrogen here that has the, the highest, uh, the highest uh, positive density. And you have the aluminium here with the with the uh, with the that with the largest negative density. This this pair positive and negative must be one close to the other. And and, and this is for the case of aluminium containing zeolite. And this is for the case of fluoride. When you make pure silica fluoride, are incorporated or defects are incorporated in the framework. And again, the distance should be minimized. If this is minimized. Okay. This then the 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 the, the cation must be ordered or or along uh, or along the, the the framework, and then the uh, the the aluminium or the fluoride should go to to particular position. This was uh, this was the the initial idea for the new research line that is going on in the institute, in which. Then, what the idea uh, of Avelino, this is not my idea actually. Uh, Avelino, what Avelino proposed, okay, we can make organic structure directing agent that mimic the transition state of a particular reaction. And if the, if the transition state mimic is stabilized, then it, it is supposed 
that the transition state of the real reaction will be stabilized and the reaction goes, will go faster and with better selectivity. This was the original idea of, the, of Avellino, and he proved with different reactions. I'm just taking here an example, the toluene disproportionation reaction in which the intermediate is this one. It is a methylene group here uh, uh, that is linked to a phenyl, uh, phenyl and a, uh, benz, a ph this is a benzyl and a toluene uh, 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 substituent. Then the transition state mimic that we prepare was this one in which we have something that is similar. The positive charge is in the, at the same position than, than, than the transition state. And the cell like here doesn't matter which cell that you obtain, because uh, we are not looking in that case for new materials, in that we are looking for material that has the particular active center in the right position to activate the reaction. In this case, the, the material that we obtain was at 27, which is with a directional uh, large for cell line. And then the, here is the comparison between the, the, the most used uh, uh, cellulite for this particular reaction, nickel supported of modernite of silicon, uh, modernite of silicon to aluminum ratio 25, is the typical, the, the, the commercial catalyst. And you can see here that IPG27 gives the same activity that the, than the optimized uh, uh, commercial catalyst. But in that case, the IPT27 has approximately the half of the, of the aluminum content. And then if we compare the turnover frequency with the, with the commercial catalyst, the activity is nearly twice. So in that the approach that Avellino proposed was correct, at least in this case. However, I, I must say that there was a little bit, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's true but not always, okay? And then because we have some other experiments and some other results, like this one, in which things are not so clear. Okay, uh, typically, as I said, we use tetrakyl ammonium cations for making the synthesis, and this is what template the, the final structure. Uh, we were working for a very long time with, uh, we, instead of using tetrakyl ammonium, tetrakyl ammonium, uh, and this is because the tetrakyl phosphonyms are much more stable than tetrakyl ammonium. And then we can run the synthesis conditions for many, many, for, for, for longer crystallization period than with, the, with, tetra, with typical tetrakyl ammonium. And then we can reach or we can go closer to thermodynamic equilibrium in the synthesis media of the zeolite. Of course, we have obtained many different zeolites. This is here, and also we have obtained many uh, other already known cellulites, but with different uh, composition and physical chemical properties. For instance, this is an example of different phosphorus containing of phosphorus containing templates okay, that all of them gives the LTH, the root 13 type of cell. Like also, I have we have a tetrakyl ammonium. All of them share that they have approximately the same aesthetic volume, and all of them are able to template nicely the root 13 zeolite. I'm going to tell you today only the results on this cation, but we have obtained also similar results with other zeolite and with other cations. Root 13 is a two-dimensional zeolite of a small pore with of eight member ring apertures. The unit cell contains 32 uh, silicons that are divided in four crystallographic sites, then the multiplicity is eight silicon per site. The pore aperture is about 4.6 by 2.5, 2.5 Armstrong. Here, that means that this is not accessible for most of the, re of the reactant. And the other one is uh, uh, 3.8 by uh, 4.1 Armstrong. And here, and is the window that, uh, that give access to the empty volume of the zeolite. Also, this zeolite contains a LTH cage, it's a small cage that is important for what I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, uh, because 
we, we did the synthesis of RU13 in here. We lost the synthesis for nearly one month. We, uh, we observed and using this, uh, this uh, chemical composition at this very, uh, this is 175 degrees. It's a, it's, a, it's a relatively high temperature for crystallization of zeolites. And in, uh, we didn't observe any uh, decomposition of the, of the template even after one month of crystallization. In all cases, you know, the solid that we recovered, uh, the, the root 13, contains about uh, uh, two, uh, two templates per unit cell and two fluoride per unit cell. And then, the, oops, sorry, the fluoride, to, to the fluoride uh, ratio to, to organic uh, to, to retinogen was one, means that the compensation is taking place because fluoride is incorporated in the solid. This is the this is the X-ray diffraction pattern. All of them can be uh, can be attributed to well crystallized root 13 zeolite. But if you look closely, okay, what happened here? Uh, there are some uh, some tiny difference in some of the peaks here, for instance, and also here, indicating that there is a, some distortion of the zeolite. And, in, and this, is, this is the same synthesis gel from going from three days to one month. Then there is something occurring inside of the zeolite. Looking into the, uh, into the, into, into the, into the scanning electron microscopy images, they look rather the same. They are similar with the same shape. They are like a spike and there is no, nothing seriously important. But we start to observe differences in the when, when we look to the carbon, to the NMR results. First, this is the typical uh, the, the carbon 13 NMR that can be attributed, you know, to the methyl group here, the signal over here around zero, and the other uh, and the and, and the other two signal two and three. Then that means that the organic cation is incorporated as it is inside of the zeolite. But we can observe here that there is a, a, a small shift of the, of, the, of, the, of the signal of the resonance of the methyl group, which, is the, which should be the closer to the, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, negative charge of the framework. Then we look into the negative charge of the framework. In that case, we look into the fluoride 19 uh, NMR. It is well known that fluoride tend to be located in the smallest space available in the in the in the zeolite, and then typically appears appear uh, the gauge signal as minus 38, minus 65, or minus 80 ppm for these particular cavities. However, what we observe is that after short time, short crystallization time. We observe a signal at 72 ppm, minus 72 ppm, that doesn't correspond to any of those. And if we live for longer, we start to see that this signal disappears, and there is another one growing here, 60, 67 ppm. But in this case, there is only one cavity, uh, one small cavity that is RTH. That means that probably inside of this of the of the zeolite. Of, the, of this cavity, there are two possible positions, and with the crystallization time, the, the fluoride jumps from one side to another. This was also observed in the, in the silicon NMR. In that case, what we observe here is that we observe six signals around here, which correspond to the, to the, to the silicon bonded to the fluoride. This is pentacoordinated silicon. And there is a chemical bond between the silicon and the fluoride. And also, there are quite a lot of <laughs> there is a quite a lot of signals in here which correspond to fully coordinated uh, silicon species. But with the time again, this evolved in uh, a complex NMR spectrum. This, by the way, has 16 signals and the and the number of crystallographic sites of this cellite is four. Uh, each one and this, each signal of this uh, uh, spec spectrum correspond to a, to a different silicon species inside of the cellite. Then there is a mismatching between the, between the spectrated structure 
and what we observe in the in this in this study. Okay, uh, we here also it, it is important to see to mention that the chemical shift of the of the of the of the floor of the silicon of the pentacoordinated silicon is very similar, 100 and minus 146 ppm, but the coupling, the coupling uh, is uh, the, the coupling constant is quite different, indicating again that there are two types of fluoride uh, of fluoride compensated the charge in the roof 13 material. We did some experiment just to check which are the material, which, which are the silicon that are linked to the to the to the fluoride by making cross polarization between fluoride and silicon. And we see that in both cases there are free silicon that interact with the fluoride, but those silicon doesn't appear at the same position. Then again, everything is showing and pointing out that there is that the, that fluoride must be bonded to silicon atoms at different sites in the LTA scales. Okay. But again, please remember, I'm talking of the same synthesis condition. Just the only thing that happens is we, 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 we last for longer the, the synthesis. To understand this, we combine different, different, different uh, technique and, 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 uh, and, uh, and knowledge, I would say, much, much more than, than technique, like a, a, a DFT, uh, X-ray diffraction and MR. Okay, the first thing was we calculate uh, by using a theoretical uh, Hermann Hermann calculate the chemical the using DFT methods uh, the the chemical shift of the of the of the fluoride when it's linked to all the T atoms of the of the RTH and this were and this was the values that he obtained and then. He obtained values from, from T1 and T2 of 50, minus 56, 62, 66, 50, 50. But some of them, you know, when you have the crystallization take longer than 10 days, the, thing, the main signal appears appear at minus 67, which is very close to T2, okay, to the signal calculated for T2 linked to the fluoride. And in the case of crystallization time shorter than 10 days, there are, the, the signal appears at minus 71 ppm, which is very close to the calculated this, the, uh, fluoride located or linked to the T3 and T4 position. Okay, this was the starting point for the river refinement. We went to the synchrotron and we did the river refinement of, uh, of uh, in powder, in, as a powder, and with, oh, sorry, and with that, we were able to localize that the that the that the fluorine the fluoride uh, the fluorine atom of fluoride anion is bonded to the silicon in the T4 for crystallization times shorter than nine, and by by uh, for in crystallization times lar larger than nine days, the 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 fluorine atoms is linked to the T4 in very good agreement. I would say it's excellent agreement to was observed by by NMR and calculated by theoretical uh, approaches. Then in this case, what we observe is that for the same, for the same, for the same material with the same cation, there is a low, at least two possibilities for compensating the charge. Being sincere, I should say that there are three, because we observe that this change occurs just in solid state. Okay. Well, this is the, this is the, the, the conclusion, but I would like to emphasize this one, is just fluoride can be located and is equally stable, not equally, uh, the one, one of them is thermodynamically stable, the other one is a, a kinetically stable, but a, a fluoride can be linked to T4 or T2 uh, uh, silicon atoms for compensating the charge. Okay, this is the first example in which I show you that not always, it is possible to control so nicely where the aluminum goes or where the, the negative charge goes. The second one is ITQ-66. ITQ-66 was obtained 
by using the mimic of the flow of the of the of, of the for the 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 first the theta kill phosphonium analog to the theta kill ammonium uh, uh, template that was used by uh, by Mike Davis and Stacy Son some time ago. That gives the SSZ16, uh, that is a, a small porcelain, and we were interested in this in this material. Then we prepared with phosphorus uh, with theta kill phosphonium cation, uh, pretending to obtain this particular material. The, the route for preparing this template is not so difficult, and we, we succeed in obtaining it. And this is the dimension of, the, of this uh, cation. It's, it's a, this is a, it's a, it's a decation that with 14 amps on length and a, a, and a width of 7.3 amps. These are the chemical composition that we try. Okay, we have the template, we have the silica, different, different heteroatoms, boron, aluminum, and gallium, a trivalent atom, also germanium, which can substitute silicon. Water, again, in chloride condition. This can be also obtained in alkaline condition. And the range of temperature between 150, 175, from five to 30 days. And this is what we obtain, okay? By, uh, we, we obtain STF, Cetesen, uh, uh, Cetesen 11, STF uh, with, uh, with, uh, with no, with, when no aluminum or when no trivalent atom were dead. Uh, and we obtain a, an unknown phase that at this moment we, we didn't know it was a mix of, of a pure phase. But we always obtain this phase when the, the, the boron to sil the silicon to boron, the silicon to gallium ratio range between 18 and 36. And when, they, when, they, when, they, when we change this ratio, the yield of the zeolite change. And then just because, but the final solid always has the same composition. Okay, these are the two examples of silicon to boron 36 in gas made, and you can see that they are nearly, uh, they are very, very similar one to each other. And then, we were, we were sure, and we, if this was reproducible, then we, 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 we Christianized this material, and we call, him, we call this material as ITQ-66. Here, what I would like to highlight is that we were not able to obtain aluminum, the aluminum analog, and we tried. I can tell you that we tried very hard. We never, we never got it. Uh, well, ITQ-66, uh, well, it's a, it's a porous material that has a, a micro per volume about 0 0.13 uh, cubic centimeter per gram. This is typically observed for, uh, for, for uh, medium or zeolite. And the pore, up, um, the pore aperture is about uh, 4, 4 5.4 Armstrong. Again, near, near to what is expected for medium per zeolite. Then we thought that this is a medium per uh, medium medium per cellet. I should mention that in this case we didn't calcine the material in oxygen because uh, all the phosphorus were, uh, uh, was in, uh, the phosphorus species, all the phosphorus debris is in the is in the in the, filling the pores, and then there is no social capacity. But if you make the instead of calcination a reduction, a thermal reduction in, in the hydrogen. You can release most of the phosphorus, and then the, the material becomes uh, because the, the empty volume becomes accessible. Be careful because in that case you regenerate phosphine, which is highly toxic. This is the structure has six uh, T atoms and of a total uh, of a total number of atoms in the unit cell of seventy two. The okay, the structure, as I told you, as, as, as we were expecting, is a is a medium porcelain, well, it's, a, it's a medium and a small b-dimensional uh, uh, porcelain, having a, a pores about 4, 4.1, 5.1, 4.8 uh, uh, aperture, which is near, close to the values that we observed by Argon by, in the in the previous slide in the Argon assertion isotherm. What is important and what I want to highlight it here is that in this case, 
boron at 66, we observe uh, uh, that boron, uh, boron preferentially occupy the T4 and T6 position and less preferentially T1. In the all other okay. remaining cell, uh, uh, cellulite, there is no boron at all. However, when you when we look in the gallium, gallium goes into the into the T5 and T3 position with no gallium in the other position. Again, we have compensation. In this case, the chance compensation occurs through the boron and gallium, but the boron and the gallium are located in different T sites, indicating that the compensation doesn't occur in the same way. I want to go very fast with the NMA with the with the, with the protonic uh, zeolites, because it's, uh, okay. Probably uh, you are aware that uh, neutrons are very sensi sensi uh, sensitive to hydrogen, and you can see hydrogen, even, uh, even uh, uh, neutrons can penetrate uh, very dense materials, but they are stopped by hydrogen. Then it's a beautiful technique for studying uh, zeolites because cellulite, we have the silica and we have the hydrocarbons or the, in this case, the template inside. Here is the same truthfully material and we are comparing the, the, the organic material with the, uh, with, the, with the cellulite, with the template inside. And you can see that there is a beautiful fit between both, indicating that the template remains exactly the same than in the, in the material. And also you can calculate all the modes and so on. Okay, that's, that's okay, and this is what is expected. We went in this, at this moment looking into, we want to study where the proton goes in the acid catalyst. The idea was, okay, which cell, the first idea was which cell that we should, we should study. We went for the simplest cell like LPA that contains one T atom and three oxygen. You try to do this with ZSN5, you will, be, you, will, you will become crazy because there are 20, T atoms and 48 oxygen. And then at, at the end, everything will be mixed. Then this is the first requirement. IC sample because we want to, IC structure because we want to calculate the spectrum. And also we want to have isolated sites. That is because we prepare the, the zeolite, uh, the LPA with a very, very high silicon to aluminum ratio. And in that case, we can assume that it's very uh, unlikely that you will have two aluminum sitting one to, to, close to each other. Yeah. The uh, silicon NMR and the aluminum NMR of the calcium material So that we got the target and we have silicon to aluminum ratio 40 and most of the aluminum is in tetrahedral coordination. Then the sample is very good. And then what we did is we measured the spectrum and then we make, a, uh, uh, we make uh, the calculation or Hermann did the calculation and calculate the spectra, the vibrational spectra of this OH, of this isolated OH. And he put the OH, the, uh, the proton, nearby to the oxygen one, nearby to the oxygen two, and nearby to the oxygen three. And just by visual inspection, you realize, we, we realize, and we do realize, that oxygen two will be the most preferential oxygen for compensating for, for being linked to the to the proton. Okay. This is a more sophisticated uh, calculation in which, um, I don't know, sorry, I'm not, as I told you, I'm not a, an specialist on that, but uh, this is a more, a, more um, uh, um, uh, um, a better calculated spectrum in which you can see, and we can figure, and you can see that the, the, these two spectra resemble one to each other, indicating that the, in this case, the mo most of the protons in aluminum at 29 with of, of, of high silicon to aluminum ratio are compensated the negatively charged oxygen two of the LPA framework. And then this is the conclusion. There is no ionic framework site for Earth day compensation. In, in some of the cellulite or many of the cellulite that we have studied, this may have a catalytic implication because the transition state of a given reaction may not be stabilized depending on where the compensating, the compensating cap, the, 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 the heteroatom is located. And, and, and also acid protons, at least in this simple zeolite, 
goes to a particular position or preferentially occupy a composite a particular position or it's close nearby to one particular oxygen. Uh, by the way, free Armstrong is a huge difference when you make calculation in the transition state. And this is the distance between two neighbor, uh, two neighbor oxygen in the CO9. Then even if the Avellino's approach is working, and I'm not going to say that it's not working in my lab, <laughs> okay? I think there is still a lot of room to think about uh, how to optimize the uh, theory for catalytic application. Of course, I would like to, to thank to the, to the funding agencies. Also, I would like to remind you that we are organizing in two weeks' time the next uh, International Celeb Conference in Valencia. And I hope to see all of you in Valencia very soon. And then, and then thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Really fascinating talk. And we have time for time for questions. Yes? Couple of quick questions. One is why 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 does that change occur in, in, in the in your first seal art you talked about discreetly after a fixed period of time from the kinetic to the thermodynamic? That's, that's one question. The second question is have you have you found any chemical consequences of this difference in the location of the fluoride in the zeolite? Well, why we don't know. <laughs> is is, is a, a, we know our opinions, but this is our opinion. Is kinetically fluoride tends to be in the in the in the in one of the two positions, but thermodynamically goes to the second one. The main problem when you try to do this in the typical synthesis using tetrakilo ammonium, as le at least from my experience, is that the tetrakilo ammonium never stay for longer periods like here, especially at, at such a high temperature. In that case, we didn't observe any single. A chemical change either in the zeolite and in the liquid in the liquid we can reuse and we we reuse because the some of these templates are very expensive we reuse the mother liquid and we make new synthesis with this okay the, we never uh, we here is very easy to follow the if there is the template the composition because you can do phosphorus and mr and the phosphorus and mr in the liquid and in the solid are exactly the same chemical composition as i showed you it's exactly the same. It just, uh, it's a, just a, it's a phase transition. I mean, it's not so surprising. It's a phase transition that is for, in the synthesis goes first kinetically to the to to the. Well, but the first one's a metastatic. Yeah. Look at this. This is the phase transition just going from 25 to 150 degrees. You can see here the phase transition and. When you go to 100 and 150 down, 150 down to 25, goes to the other one, and also we run the the calorimetric studies. And look, this is nine days lower temperature. This is the jump when you when you break down this 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 uh, silicon to fluoride uh, 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 bond, of course a, a lower temperature than in the thermodynamic one, which makes sense. Okay. Thanks, yeah. So, uh, Jan uh, is asking in your first study, when the F minus moves to C corner C two position, how does that impact the proton position in the structure and hence properties? At that moment, there is no. So, you mean in the in the in the in the in the first one? In the, in the first study. No, at that moment there is no proton there. There is no proton there. There is only organic cation. Okay, the proton is formed when you can sign, or in that case, it the, the, the organic uh, the organic moiety, and then you you have to compensate the charge. In that case, this is pure silica, there is no charge in the framework. Right, at the back then. <clears throat> Thank you for the lovely talk. Uh, so just, uh, I'm curious about the ITQ66 that you had in the middle for us. Um, and I suppose there's a couple of questions. So the general question is, why do you think you can't make the aluminum silicate version of it? And, and then the second question is, have you tried taking the structures 
the system you have made and specifically looking at the gallium, which looks like it's in quite a, a small um, ring, whether or not you can take the gallium out and substitute the aluminium in post synthesis. Well, we, 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 we try bottom, uh, uh, well, we don't, uh, Herman, uh, Herman is the, the, the person who takes care of the computational studies, is trying to understand why border and gallium goes to different positions and also why aluminum doesn't go into this particular structure. We don't know yet. Hopefully we will understand, but we need theoretical calculation for that. We try to do the, the substitution of boron by aluminum, as Stacy did some time ago, and we didn't succeed. When you try to, to put aluminum there, you can remove the boron, you can remove the gallium, but aluminum doesn't, doesn't go in. I don't know. I would like to have it. I have a quick one for your um, protons in LTA. Is the, you, you find it goes to the O2 side. Does, does the calculation show that that's the most stable <laughs> configuration? It is. By a considerable amount. Mm, yes. Several cases. Seven, yes, yeah. seven. Also, we observe that this is the we make in a second experiment, I didn't have time, sorry. Uh, we make for a silicon to aluminum ratio of five. Yeah. And in that case, there are pairing and it's, it's still the O2 is the, the, O2. Is the really And now we are trying to do in a more complex zeolite, but calculation becomes really tough. Good, well, we probably should move on, but thank you again, Fernando. Thank you.